Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big P here, the voice of hardcore boxing. You know, don't you? You know, because that's why you've tuned in. Right, so a quick Zoom, half an hour chat with Simon from Bristol. Then I'm going to fly into office and burn some rubber today. Right, first thing I want to talk about before you come, with, come up with all your questions that you've sent me, uh, that you've emailed me, is... This WWE incident in the Babel, in Eddie's Babel, we're in the Babel with this Florian Marco and this McGowan guy, however, they're tweeting each other saying, What room are you in? Do you want it? Let's have it. All that nonsense. And you've got Coogan walking up and down the corridor in his dressing gown with his skiddy undies filming it all and everybody coming out of the room. Hey, what's going on here? What's going on? It's the middle of the night. What on earth is going on? And, and why have we got this Sam Jones character? Right, This is a guy who hasn't got a board license, not board registered, promising fighters mega deals, him and this Adam Morley guy. The promising fighters, all these mega deals, and, and they're not delivering, and nobody can go to the board complaining. And we've got him there inserting himself into every situation, this Sam Jones. Do you know every time I turn my fucking TV on, there's this Sam Jones on telly? He's doing interview after fucking interview. He's fucking annoying me. He needs to come and kneel before the porks to explain himself. Every time I see him, he's in, he's in boxing ring. Did you know you're not even allowed in a boxing ring at a professional show if you've not got a laminate? You know what a laminate is, don't you? A board license. This guy's not got a laminate. But yet, he, all of a sudden, he's him and Eddie Ernest saying they go way back and blah de blah. And he, he's, the, he's, he's, he's strutting about like he's Carl King, Don King's son. What's going on, Simon? Fill me in. Let me know. It, it keeps popping up in the videos, like we're saying. I think one of the ones last week was noticeable with um, Joe Joyce and family. We had a nice, sincere sort of insight to the background of Joe Joyce with his mum, his brother, talking about Joe and his, his character and his career. And then uh, Mr. Jones pipes up in the video with his sidekick again. And it's, uh, it's becoming a bit more of um, the Sam Jones show than it is his actual boxers. So he's like the mini Hearn at the moment, the mini hills. Mini. <laughs> mini hills. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What did what, what are your car salesmen in Derby or summer? Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, but he seems to. King. He seems to have come out of the ashes of that ring star debacle last yeah. few years back that sort of crashed and burned. Yeah, yeah. I remember the remember the, I think his sidekick is that lad who got called the um, the gimp from in between us in the Hay Belly press conferences. <laughs> Adam Morley. Is that the same fella? Yeah. I think he's MTK lawyer, isn't he, or something like that. He's some ad Everybody's an advisor these days or a consultant or... <sighs> Listen, mate, I don't know what's going on, mate, but that in that bubble last night, Eddie Hearn there tweeting, security, 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 six, room 694. It's gimpish and gimpville island behaviour. All only thing missing were Mr Bean. Walking up and down in his Transformer uh, pyjamas. And Johnny Nelson there walking up and down with his big size 17 feet going, Yeah, man, cool, man, cool. It's not worth it. Don't throw a punch. It's cool. Be cool, man. Gain it all that. It, listen, mate, it is becoming farcical. And all that design last night, right, is for pay-per-view buys to build a fight up for down the line. You see what they're doing? They're all sat in each other's rooms and they're saying, here, why don't we get some fake beef going on Twitter and we'll go down to somebody's room and we'll build a fight up for down the line. And then what you'll do today, you'll get Eddie Earn popping out saying, oh, a bit tense this morning, Coogs, at breakfast. Oh, my God. I've never known no like it. Eddie thinks he's Vince Mann, doesn't he? This is not boxing. Yeah, it's... Um... Circus. It's a fucking circus. 
And nobody dares say a fucking word. You know why? Because they all want to get in Eddie Hearn's good books. He's the ringmaster. He's controlling them all. And they're all behaving like little gimps. Little gimps. Did you see? Oh, oh what it all popped his head out right? Get back in your room! Well, that Peter Fury, get back in your fucking room, somebody shouted. So I don't know what... I hope it was, Peter. Hey, could you imagine... I hope it was, Peter. Hey, could you imagine somebody tweeting Yui at middle at night and what room are you in, Yui? And going down and bang, trying to stalk rumours. What the fucking hell fire? Hey? I've, I've never known no like it at the moment. It is scraping... The fucking barrel. Scraping the fucking barrel. In fact, I'm not even going to fucking pay my tech guy to jazz this video up. It's going straight out. These gimps need putting in their fucking place. And anybody who believes that load of fucking shit on Twitter. People were sending me screenshots at midnight. Sending me shit like that. I mean, pff, I mean, I like to know what's going on. Like, I like to be kept in loop, but that is just scraping the barrel. That is the lowest that it's gone now. And I'm telling you now, right, they must be fucking desperate for pay-per-view buys tomorrow night. They must be desperate, Simon, because that is a fucking shambles, mate, that. I don't know. What, what, what do you think, Simon? I'm not. I'm not sure this show tomorrow is going to do big figures. Yeah, I don't think. It, I think they might get a bit of the casuals in, but I can't see it doing big, big numbers like previous AJ cards. Well, AJ shot his Senate foot with that. Uh, with some of the stuff he's been coming out with lately, hasn't he? They've tried the Google uh, rescue advert on that, though, haven't they? I've seen it. Well, he says, "Oh, let's all hold so, hands together." And sing, we are the world, we are the future. AJ's coming out doing Google adverts like that, but a few months ago, he was saying, don't buy any food out, any white man's shops, only buy from black men. Black men's shops, Is that, that's right, isn't it? Well, along them lines, do you know what I mean? So, but now it's let's all hold hands. It's Oh, it's craziness, mate, how these people are whoring themselves out. They are whores, whores, brasses. It's a joke. So if anybody's got a problem, come see me. Don't chat shit in emails. Come and knock on fucking door or my office door. For fuck's sake, man. Scraping the fucking barrel, man, that. That were embarrassing. Oh, it was so embarrassing. It were unbelievable. I can't, I can't even believe what I've just seen. It's that bad. In fact, I will get this video. Uh, I, in fact, I'm not even going to follow it sheep. I'm just going to go into my normal mode. They can fucking wait for this video. I don't need to be like all the rest of them, rushing shit out. I'm my own man. But Coogan Cassius, you're embarrassing. Running up and down, running up and down a corridor at fucking that time at night while people are trying to sleep. With a fucking camcorder or, or whatever it is you've got in your fucking Transformers dressing gown, Coogan. That is embarrassing. I mean, who told you to run up and down with your camera, Coogan? Eddie fucking Earn. Security! Security to seat room 694! And you know when they were telling them to go back in the rooms? Them security guys, the fucking doorman, aren't they, with security t shirts? They were probably thinking, what the fuck is this? They're telling people to go back to the room. Do you know what it reminded me of? When I used to, I'll tell you what it reminded me of. Nigel Ben against Gerald McClellan when we were all in Doncaster prison. And screws were saying, get in your rooms. We were like, fuck off for watching this fight. It reminded me of being in prison because you know when you're in prison at bang up eight o'clock, everybody's on association from six while eight, right? And you might just slob a bar. You might be in your cell, might be playing pool or something. But when it comes to 7.55 and that bell rings, everybody starts running around like lunatics and they just don't want to go in the cell and be locked in the in the rooms. It reminded me of that. So could you imagine half of that shower that were out there last night? Could you imagine them in a fucking jail? Could you imagine them in jail with people like me, Peter Fury, Martin Bowers? People like that, Jimmy Tibbs would be like, fucking move out of my way. Do you know half of them? I'd have a mop in my fucking sellout in prison. 
Because they can't go home at night, can they? And they've got to see me next fucking morning at breakfast. And let me tell you, I'd be fucking stood there at breakfast. Let me tell you, waiting for the fuckers. Because that last night in there were fucking gimpish behaviour. They're not fucking behaving like real fucking men. Fucking real men. Fucking hell, fight. You know, fucking proper boxing people, right? Proper boxing people in proper boxing industry. I'm not going to say any names, but... And there's people I know in that bubble who are fucking laughing at them. They're the fucking jokers, mate. I'm fucking frothing at them. Yeah, it's all a bit... It's all a bit travel lodge beef, isn't it? Fucking pantomime, mate. Pantomime. I bet half of them were fucking sniff out the minds. Fucking running up corridors in the dressing gown. What the fucking hell, fireman? Get on fucking Cat Alley at back at hotel and get at it. Forget your fucking payments and down the line. Get around fucking back at Cat Alley. Cat Alley. Sort it on cobbles. Fucking running up and down like that. Oh, I'll fight you that line. Fucking pantomime. I can't believe what I've fucking just seen. It's a fucking joke, man. You've got these people slipping think, into boxing now, right? You think Huey's going to do a number on whack? Hey, do I what? Yeah, you oh. can knock him out, man. Do you think uh, Huey's going to do a good number on Marius whack? Yeah, Huey will ice him. He's going to ice Marius back. Huey's an ice man now. I've seen him sparring, mate. He's like an ice man. He's two stone heavier than when he fought Povetkin, mate. He's, a, he's an ice man now, Huey. Punching hard as a mill, mate, honestly. People, he's putting division on notice, mate. So, yeah, I think he does. Yeah. Couple, couple with all you, his movement and, and 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 defensive skills and that. And pff, he's an handful for anybody, you know? Don't forget, he's only just turned 26 as well, you know. So, but yeah. Uh, what, what other questions did you want to ask me, Simon? Now that we've let some steam off. So it's more so a bit of reflect. It's more so what? My angle today was a bit more of a reflection. I come in on the angle of um, the BT Sport Box Nation launch is around about four years old now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we're still so for this the whole tech off, aren't we? So every time we hear a Bricktop interview, it's like the fans want this matchup. The fans wanted this product. But what's your thoughts on what's been delivered so far as a as a platform away from away from its competitors? Well, he's, you've got to give him credit. He's delivered the Fury Wilder fights, hasn't he? He delivered Joe Joyce against Daniel Dubois. He put Yard in with Arthur, so he's rolled the dice, Frank, can he? But he nearly come a cropper with first Fury Wilder one because Fury, I don't think he were at 100%. The second one, he got it right. The Joe Joyce Debar one, he got that wrong and he got the Yard Arthur, Arthur what? <clears throat> yard Arthur, he got that wrong. But on the whole, them four fights are the standout ones. I don't know if you uh, has noticed any more that he's had in the last four years. There haven't been that many more, has there really? I think he's done. I think he's had the better matchups in the lockdown period. Oh, Frank, for sure. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think Frank Warren's stepped up to the plate and rolled the dice a bit more than Eddie. But where Eddie Earn shot his Senate foot, he's running about saying it's got to be 50 50s from now on. Well, only 50 50 Eddie's put on that I enjoyed were Eggington against uh, Cheeseman, and they were 24 and 26 at the time. And they've had they've had stuffing knocked out of a monthly basically them two. Well, Eggington, Eggington's on Channel Five tonight, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, Eggington's on, and he's going up against uh, Channel Five's going up against Eurosports tonight, aren't they? Dennis Hobson's showing car park, so that should be that's nice. that's on. Yeah, Dennis's show is on. Yeah, that they're, they're going up against. Uh, NSC Sport. I believe Dave Allen's a commentator for Dennis tonight. Dennis and Dave Allen working, eh? To get... See, this is what you get in boxing, isn't it? Dennis got rid of Dave Allen because he will not train, so Dave Dave left after a few years with Dennis, and now they're working together again, so I mean, we all know what was said in between, don't we? But 
this is how a pound note can alter people's minds. People just turn into prostitutes, don't they? You know, where there's money at stake. But we all wish Dennis's show well. I'll be watching Dennis's show tonight and I'll I'll be taping uh, Mick Ennis's and I'll watch Mick straight after. But, uh, but yeah, it's uh, let, there's some good boxing on over the next two days, isn't there? Well, we're going to see if it's good boxing, aren't we? But Dennis's show is 50 wins, two losses and a draw for home fighters. And away one, I think they've 40... 48 or something wins, 45 wins or something, 80-odd losses and 10 draws. So they're not 50-50s, really, because five opponents out of the seven fights have got losing records. So, But he's, he's having a go, and it's in a car park. It's something different. I don't know how it's going to go down, but you've got to give him respect for having a go and putting the money where the mouth is, haven't you? Know? I'm not. I not said too much on that, but we've got to give them respect. But, uh, but like I said, this this uh, this last night, this uh, this pantomime in hotel corridors flipped me lid. But all right, then moving on. What, what yeah, else do you want to talk about, uh, Simon? So, so I'm ref- but, but a bit more of a reflection on the on the BT side of things. I'm looking more about the elements of like the production, the commentators. Um, the presenters now, um, but for that platform to be leading the way, I think they they need to start making some some changes to their their, their staff involved. Um, Richie Woodall um, just refers to a number of stock phrases. Um, if you're looking at his scoring. Comes out last like, oh, he's just pinched that round again in the last 10 seconds of the round. And it's like, there doesn't seem to be any real structure and analysis and scoring. Yeah. Uh, well, Richie Woodall's gonna gonna go for own fighter, in you know, whoever, whoever he's working for. If he's working for Frank Warren, he'll be scoring it on his unofficial scorecard for a Frank fighter, won't he, Richie Woodall? You know, he knows how to play. Look, you've got to understand, right, these these people, they're not going to go against the grain, these pundits, because they want to get back on. Because a lot of them are doing this job. They're not financially secure. They might make out they are, but trust me, they're not. So they're just going to go it on promoter. Nobody's going to come out there like Paulie Malignaggi or Carl Froch or Jim Watt and tell it as they see it, they're gonna they're gonna go with narrative, aren't they? Do you, do you agree? It's, it seems to be the case. But anyone that does any sort of truth speaking seems to be pushed by the wayside. Yeah. Oh well look what happened to Clinton Woods. When Clinton Woods were at Sky and he's my pal Clinton and he he won't mind me telling you this story. Clinton were, got drafted in to do a Sky uh pundit work. I think it might have been in the studio, but don't quote me on it. And it were a fight beamed abroad or summer or I'm not quite sure, but I think or he might have been ringside, but Clinton were drafted in. Same with Robin Reed uh, he, when he did some bits for him. They, they asked Clinton's opinion and he did it and they went, Oh you can't say that. Clinton went, Well you've got me here as a as a world champion to gain an analysis, aren't you? Oh, what what do you mean? That guy shouldn't be in with that guy. Yeah, but you can't say that. That's a true story, mate. So we know what goes on, don't we? They're not all going to be like Johnny Nelson, are they? Company man, who's who's going to sell it, sell his soul to stay to stay in the mix. I mean, Johnny Nelson, he's been there that long now. The part at furniture, aren't they, these people? The reason they stay that long is because they read off the script. Paulie Malignaggi didn't last at Sky, did he? And there's others that have not lasted. But the ones who want to go, yes, sir, no, sir, you Darren Barkers, people like that, they'll always pick up a few quid, won't they? But like I said, not everybody will last the pace. I mean, is that a record, the amount of time Johnny Nelson and Bean have been at Sky? It must be a record, is it? So How long are we looking now? 20 years? Bean's been there 30. Bean's dad worked under Johnny Sky, didn't he? When did Johnny retire? I think Johnny was... mid noughties Johnny retired in 06, didn't he? Johnny's been there 14 years, Johnny. Bean's been there 30. 
So Bean's been there from day one, hasn't he? Bean's dad were quite high up, wasn't he, at Sky? So Bean's like part and parcel of furniture. I mean, it, this this is a true story, this, and I've said this before on the channel, and if anybody's got a problem with it, send me a legal letter. Bean, right, tried to leave Sky to get on Satanta when Dennis had Satanta. This is a true story. Bean were ringing up. Oh, can you get me on at Satanta? Chris Brown's bullying me. Chris Brown, what, no-nonsense guy at Sky, right? And what happened is Bean got rid of him. I'm not going to go into how he got rid of him, but let me tell you this, mate. Bean, have you seen that program uh, with, with Bricktop in Snatch where they, they end up doing somebody in at the beginning of it? <laughs> and this, this guy this guy sets this geezer up, doesn't he? And, and he says, you're a ruthless little cant. <laughs> then, but, I've, but I've got no time for fucking grasses. And they end up doing him in, don't they? Put a plaggy bag on his head. Well, let me tell you this. Bean is one of them. If, you, if you're no good at Sky... Bean will get rid of you. He's a ruthless little cunt. Now, Bean, when it looked like things weren't going his own way, he wanted to fucking jump ship, didn't he? And when Dennis said, oh, I'll, I'll have a word, but Dennis didn't get back to him because they were knocked down for him, for Bean. They didn't want him at Satanta. But Satanta ended up going under anyway, didn't they? So what happened? Bean must have put Plan B into action and got and turned fucking... Well, we know what he did, don't we? He got rid of Chris Brown, didn't he? And who were it who got Chris Brown's job? There you go. I think it were Barney Francis, wasn't it? He's been there now. Look, Bean's been there 30 years. And no happens unless Bean says it. Bean's like the godfather there, mate. Telling you, now, aren't you, Bean? I know you're fucking watching, you're wrong. And, and your laptop into it, please. But uh, they're fucking pissing me off now. I'm going to end up with an ulcer. Or is it, he definitely dodged a bullet not going to Satanta? Of course he did, because this is what... Listen, these people are whores, mate. A lot of them. 90% whores. And that's just how it is. That's just how it is, because... What would Johnny Nelson do if he weren't working at Sky? He couldn't get up in the morning and train people. He couldn't do it. He blagged it as a boxer, mate. You were guided through choppy waters by Brendan Ingle, a great trainer and manager, but they're not going to hold jobs down, are they? What's Bean going to be able to do if he leaves Sky? They're not going to get a, set him on at BT Sport, are they? Do you think Dennis Hobson's going to give Adam Smith a job at Eurosport? Not a fucking chance, mate. Not a chance. Not won't even put a word in for him, mate. Because they, they've had such a good run with what they are that they've pissed people off, haven't they? I think Johnny Nelson could go to BT Sport. Yeah, pro Frank could probably have him there hanging coats up at after party. These people are these people are ruthless little cunts, mate. They would shaft their own grandma. A lot of them, 90% of them. At least Paulie Malignaggi told it straight. At least Carl Froch tells it straight. You know what I mean? They're fucking jokers, mate. Honestly, it's a cult. Once you join the cult, you can't get out. Telling you, they're in the bubble that they're, they're dreaming up scenarios to make fights to get in Eddie Earn's good books. And Eddie's just like Clint Eastwood. Let's just go with it. They're just doing that, mate. Clint Eastwood, when he directs, if people start improvising, he goes, just let it run. That's what they're doing, mate. They're all pandering to Eddie Earn's ass owl. That's what they're doing, mate. It's a fucking joke it's not boxing no more it's vince Mann's wwe all they need now is dave allen walking around in a dressing gown and his bart simpson slippers just to fucking finish the circus off because it's like look it's like the loony bin you know all that they're all gonna end up in loony bin when they're older you know but like i said 90 percent of them couldn't do a week in jail without wetting their knickers because they'd have to face people like me because if I'm not going to get you on a Monday, I'll get you on a Tuesday. If I can't get you on Tuesday, I'll see you down at church on a Sunday. There's nowhere to run in there, mate. These are not real people. They're talking about character building in these interviews. Character building because they've had a loss and they're getting underground the fight. Character fucking building. Fucking hellfire. Try having your kids upon a visit crying because the dad's not there and he can't take them for a pair of trainers. That's character building. 
character building. These fucking hellfire. Try a year in solitary confinement. They don't know about going to dark fucking places and mental health and all this shit. Fucking mental health. They're spinning this mental health like it's fucking, oh, I don't fancy it today. I've got mental health issue. This is another thing that's fucking wrong with 90% of them. Snowflakes, the fucking lot of them, and brasses. I'm embarrassed watching that last night. Anyway, let's go through them other questions you wanted to for our fucking spew. You've, men you, you've, you've mentioned a lot about um, scoring on previous shows. Yeah. But one thing that's the one thing that resonated with me is that you said about scoring around in thirty second chunks. Yeah, you're that. Now, what are you years? What, go on, sorry, go on. What? Why aren't we getting transparency on why these scorers are? getting these cards so wrong why can't they adopt a similar method to what you've explained yeah i don't know mate it's uh this you mean the proper judges Obviously, yeah judges. They, they, they seem to be having a night they seem to have a nightmare with it ian john lewis terry o'connor he's one of the guys. This is how did I... He, did he ref Dubois as well? I can't hear you, mate. Go on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, go on. He also ref Dubois the, the previous week. Right, this is how I look at it, right? Terry O'Connor, they fucked him off, didn't they, match him after it writs an episode. But he slipped back in with a few shows on him. But listen to this. This is my theory on it. If there's a close round, certain judges are going to give it to the home promoter's fighter. That's just the nature of the beast, isn't it? Right? That's just how it goes. Other judges will score it correctly because they 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 know they know they can't go like other judges. Marcus McDonald scored the yard one correctly for Arthur, and the other judge I forgot his name, but Ian John Lewis. Ian John Lewis is either corrupt. Or he's incompetent. I think he's incompetent. I don't think he's corrupt. I think he's just incompetent. But when you're getting money hand over fist like these people are getting, right, to be cooped up in an hotel at well, however many days, getting your mileage, 45p a mile, and then getting paid for your, your evening's graft, free food, free gratis, free petrol, free everything, and getting yourself on TV and being known as Mr. Fucking Referee, Mr. Judge. It's all very nice, isn't it? All that. So you don't need to get anybody a brown envelope when you're just copying that money every single weekend, week in, week out. These people have got their noses in the fucking trough. So they don't need to take a backhander. They know, though, if they go against the grain and they fucking give a card out that's not favourable, they know they'll not be asked again by that promoter. They'll be, oh, I don't want him. This is what goes on behind the scenes. Oh, we don't want him. Get me so-and-so else. And this is what happens. So they're going to do the best, aren't they? So when it's a close round, they'll get it to other fighters. And then when they're pulled about it, what well, fucking what card were that? Well, they were close rounds and he were doing more coming forward and he wasn't throwing out and they were hitting gloves and this and that. And this is where boxing's wrong. But fighters, they know this when they're away fighters. So all I'm going to say is you've got to fucking go for a knockout. You ain't got to leave it to judges. Do you know what I mean? But some of the shocking, some of the scoring is shocking. It's a joke. It is an utter joke. So what can you do? It's uh, what can you do? It's a total joke. So go on then. Uh, with, the, with the beat. With the BT show, do you think um, Andy Lee was pretty much the shining light of the evening in terms of commentary stroke punditry with what he said about the quitting? Yeah, I think Andy Lee nailed it, and I think he he's good. But it, it remains to be seen what how Andy Lee how Andy Lee talks when it's a friend of his fighting, or it's a friend of a friend, or it's an MTK fighter, or. I don't know. It, 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 it'd be nice to see see what Andy Lee says then. But then again, Andy Lee could be just saying that about Dubois. 
because he wants to play a game, because MTK want to sign him, because everybody's got an agenda. 100% of them have an agenda. 90% of them are not genuine. Right? They won't call it as they see it. They won't say it as they see it. I mean, it's like this This in this bubble, for example. Coogan's in bubble. Michelle Phelps is in bubble, right? And then it's usually Rob Tebbett in bubble as well, or is he? I don't know. It's them three that get access all the time, but they're not proper media. They don't have media credentials. They're just the Eddie Hearn men, aren't they? The matchroom men, aren't they? All, all Michelle Phelps as a woman. It's, they're all matchroom people, aren't they? Matthew, matchroom mouthpieces. They're not going to go against the grain, are they? People keep telling me, Pokey, oh, you're wrong, Rob, Rob Tebbett asked proper questions. Rob Tebbett prods. He don't go in for the kill. Rob Tebbett is the type of guy to take a bird out for three weeks, have 20 dates and not make a move on her. He's that type of guy. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? He's, he's the type of guy that he'll, he'll want to wait, whereas other, other men will be like, here, after three dates, be like, hey, what's fucking going on here, love? Go on, get out of my car. You know, that kind of thing. Rob Tebbett's that type of guy. He's a prodder, but he, he won't follow through, if you know what I mean. I saw him prodding Bean a few weeks ago in an interview, but once he had Bean on, on rack, he didn't move in for kill for me. He, he backed off. He retreated. Do you know what I mean? He, Rob Tebbett is a, he's a good gunner. He's going to do wonders, but all he does is sit on cucumbers. Do you know what I mean? That's what Rob Tebbett is, mate. Rob, come see me. But uh, Coogan, he's a very good interviewer, very patient behind the camera, very polished. But he's not going to want to rock the boat, is it? He? He's also a probably hardest one, hardest working YouTuber out there. Very hard worker. But he's not going to want to rock the boat. And can you blame him if they're getting good dough? No, you can't. But Rob Tebbett and Coogan, they're both actors, aren't they, that didn't make it as actors. So they probably wanted a bit of fame. And now they're getting their bit of fame, aren't they? To them, it's satisfying, isn't it, for them? But they're not going to rock the boat. But like I said, Coogan's the better interview. Rob probably comes out with bigger words because he's better educated. But they're not going to rock the fucking boat, are they? They're not going to take food off the table, so to speak. The other one, well, we know what she is, don't we? She's a fucking whore, mate. That's bottom line. I'm not even going to go into that, but it is what it is. Um, so a couple more questions on the, on the sort of BT arrangement. Uh, I... David Hayes switches between platforms, but the last two two cards, he seems to have taken an attacking stance of the uh, the loser of the main card. Uh, previously, it was on attacking Dubois for quitting, and now with Yard, he's not sparring enough. Uh, it just seems to be he doesn't seem to think the response is through before delivering delivering them live. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel that? Do you think that David A didn't call it as he seen it then? The the quit thing with Dubois was the most obvious thing going, and it was so clear that he had a major eye problem that night. I don't think it would have quit. I think he, his eye opened up in round three, didn't it? I think for the ref. So. I think Ian John Lewis should have called the doctor earlier. Ian John Lewis is Ian John Lewis, right? Were frightened to refer it to the doctor because he's Frank Warren's man, isn't he? Or or he's Eddie Earns' man. He's the home promoter's man. Ian John Lewis knew that he couldn't refer that to the doctor because he wouldn't have been he wouldn't have been asked to go back on another show. So they didn't refer it to the doctor, but the doctor. Doesn't he have the chance to check on the eye during rounds? Yeah, and a, and a corner referral. Yeah, so we, we the corner didn't refer it because they maybe thought it was swelling. Maybe Daniel Dubar never told them uh, about what was going on, on on during it. But Martin Bowers were going to call it at the end after round 10 anyway. So he didn't have long to go because he was struggling with it. But... I'm not going to call it a quit for the simple reason that he fought on for seven rounds with that eye, and it probably got that too, it probably got that bad that he, he like he tapped out like MMA guys do, but they're not called quitters, are they? 
So exactly, that goes back to the Andy Lee. Hey, that goes back to the Andy Lee uh, breakdown, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, mate. And uh, like I've just said to you, that these these people are, have all got agendas. And what I found bad was Boxing Social and IFL the next day on the Sunday. You seen all the interviews, didn't you? Constant, wasn't it? Everybody they hammered him. Hammered him, Coldwell, Scam Jones. We don't call him Sam Jones now. We call him Sam Jones. Sam Jones, come see me. We call him Sam Jones. Uh, Scam Jones, sorry. All these people doing interviews, Joyce's lot and blah, blah, blah. Listen, let me tell you this. Joe Joyce didn't like it getting roughed up against Usyk, didn't he? He got his head boxed off, right? It's not nice, is it? Daniel DeBoss, 23-year-old, is still a kid. I think he might have been... Two fights off of Joe Joyce, but he wanted the fight. They were undefeated, so why not? So I respect Frank Warren for putting that fight on and rolling the dice, and he'll bring them back. I mean, it's obvious Joyce has got one fight left with Frank, and then they're going to match him because Scam Jones is putting all his eggs in one basket where they earn now, isn't it? They're like big mates, aren't they? So they'll get that one more fight out with Frank, and then he'll go to match him, Joe Joyce. But you see, I suppose you've got to give Scam, Scam Jones a bit of respect as well because he's been with Joe Joyce from the beginning, Annie, he? and he's been his mouthpiece. But I'm seeing too much of him on, on internet at the moment. He's going to say he's getting his men out there, so it is what it is, isn't it? But is is this the new is this the new uh, criteria now? If you want to get on in boxing, you've got to befriend certain YouTube channels and get yourself out there and sell yourself it or get somebody to do it for you. Is this, is this the new norm? Is this the norm or what? Cause whatever happened to talent, whatever happened to just proper talent, that's all I want to know. That's all I want to know, but it, it doesn't appear that, uh, it, uh, that that's happening. Does it? It doesn't appear that way, but I don't know, but people just want to get themselves out there and be a bit of have a bit of fame. You don't get Huey Fury and Savannah Marshall, do you? Whoring themselves out like some of these, do you? Do you? Do you, do you get that? You don't, do you? You get Luke Campbell. Do you get Liam Smith? Callum Smith, world champions. Liam Smith. Stephen Smith. Do they whore themselves out? Now, <coughs> no, it's Joe Gallagher done or put himself out on every interview now. They're just getting on with the boxing, aren't they? I think it's all going to come to an end. I think somebody will get killed in a ring soon with some of this Kamaskazi matchmaking, especially these YouTubers who, who, who want to be boxers. Or I think somebody will get stabbed or something in one of these bubbles or something. There'll, something will go off or there'll be, somebody will be drugged up or drunk or something will be said and there's something that's going to kick off if they have these bubbles, something will happen. Because if that were genuine last night, well, what's going on? You've got all these people all in close proximity of each other, but I don't believe it were. And all these coming out with all this knackers, I mean, why are they running up and down corridors? If them tweets were, were, were genuine, that Sam Jones should have said, hey, what are you fucking doing, silly bollocks? Going around to people's rooms or vice versa, other guys' management should have said. And it should have been nipped in bud. So you stop this, or Eddie will fuck us off. But they're not going to do that. You'll get Eddie Earn coming out here today, and they'll be saying, I've had a word, and so-and-so's had a word, and it's not going to happen again. I'm not putting up with it. But it's a great fight for the downline cooks. That's what knackers you're going to hear tonight, and they're all laughing their bollocks off. All these casuals who are buying into it, but the hardcores like us, we don't buy into knackers. See, I don't do knackers, me. People talk knackers in my company. I just, I said, mate, don't come around near me talking knackers like that. I won't have it. It's knackers talking for the sake of talking knackers. I won't, I just won't put up with it. And neither will people that I have it with. Yeah, I don't want to hear knackers. We want to see fights. That's what we want to see. I don't want to see garbage served up. You'd think they'd roll dice and take a lead off Frank Warren, wouldn't you, with fights he's put on in the in this bubble period, wouldn't you? Do you think, Simon? I think so, but he's in a strange position now, and I've, I've had a quick look at the schedule today, 
and he's got nothing booked now. There's no Brit Top shows booked for a while that I can see on the schedules. So yeah. he's rolled the dice and he's on the back foot big time. Yeah, he is on the back foot, but he's like a cockroach, isn't he? He could survive a nuclear blast. Frank Warren could survive a nuclear blast, trust me, and he will be back like Jason out Friday at 13th, or is it Michael Myers at Halloween? Frank will be back. The shoulder roll will be back on form. No suits, no shirts, no ties, air immaculate, blow-dried, pulling up in Rolls Royce. Frank will dust himself down and go again. And Eddie Earn will be gone soon. Soon as Joshua's gone, Eddie Earn will bail out because he, he won't be able to sell this bullshit for much longer. And if Eddie Earn fucks off, good riddance because he's annoying me. He annoys me. I'll probably miss him though, Eddie, if he goes, but he's starting to annoy me because they're turning it into like a soap opera like they, like his old man did with snooker. Do you know what I mean? That's what they're turning it into. But with the snooker, they had to play each other, didn't they? Whereas in boxing, if Tyson Fury don't want to fight Joshua or Joshua don't want to fight him, they're not going to fight. They'll just keep spinning it and spinning it and spinning it for as long as they can. It wouldn't even surprise me if it didn't happen while 2023, because that's how untruthful these people are. Because you got to look at it like this. Once you tell a lie, you can't tell another to keep it going. And they've been keeping it going now for about 10 years, haven't they, Eddie Earn mob? So, well, we're going to see, aren't we? But like I said, they could both beat each other, aren't they? I've met Fury favourite, but if they're going to get millions like they're doing, why would they want to fight each other? Eh? They're not going to fight till there's a gate anyway, are they? We know that, don't we? Because I've heard back. So, but I don't know, but this this bit bubble last night, it's 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 like a fucking having a boil on your ass that you can't see and you keep prodding it with your fucking needle to get puss out there. It's like having a boil on your ass, mate, that you want to get rid of. Shocking, mate. Cringeworthy at its worst. And boxing's lowest point of the year. People in dressing gowns. Middle at night. Oh, my God. Am I a fucking lollipop or something? Shocking, mate. Shocking. One, one more question from from kind of the ashes of, of the show last week, the BT show, is that... The ashes. It's kind of a mix. <laughs> so the, there is quite a bit of hate going towards Tunde and Yard now. Yeah. Um, what I'd like to sort of say with Tunde is that he's, he's done a miraculous job getting Yard through two fights in lockdown because he's lost his dad and his his grandma, I think it is, granddad. from COVID. His granddad and his dad. Or so. I know he's lost two members yeah, of his but, family, hasn't he? So one day clearly got with Yard is a really strong bond. And everyone's telling him, telling Yard now to jump shit. But I'm not sure that's the best decision for Yard going forward. No, I don't. Listen, Anthony Yard and Tunde Ajayi, right, they've probably been through things together that nobody even knows. They've probably sat up late at night talking deep and, and, and gone over stuff together. And, and it looks like they're really tight. So why, why would anybody want to give him an hard time? I know that Tunde can be annoying. And all this lions in the camp. Well, they can't shout that now, can they? Because he's got two losses. I thought Arthur beat him. I thought he beat him 7-5. The, the other five... Yeah. He weren't ready for Kovalev, but Kovalev was shot to bits. And, and, and he just did the same thing with a jab. Now, but Anthony Yard is still raw. He, he's still something in the in, in the making, isn't he? he? So they've probably done things together that nobody else sees. Uh, so I don't agree with all this sack Sunday stuff. Now I've looked at it, I think, now. They should still stay together and just, just try different things. Try it. Uh, and just take some advice off other people and go see some old arts. Go speak to Jimmy Tibbs, ask him what he thinks. Go speak to Mark Tibbs. Go speak to some experienced people in game. Go speak to Frank Warren. He's not he's not behind door, Frank. And have a chat about it. But Tundi's his manager as well, so it's going to be a bit hard if he wanted to get rid of him because he's got a trainer management deal with him. But no, I don't agree with. I don't agree with. I've never agreed with all this sack the trainer stuff. No, I've never agreed with all that. 
No, never agreed with it. If you're on the slide and it continues, it's something you've got to look at, isn't it? But no, I've never agreed with all that, mate. No. So now I think that Tony should stay with him. Maybe they could bring somebody else on board to have a few sessions with them, but keep it in house and don't let social media know about it. Don't tell everybody your business. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing in boxing because there's a lot of squealers in boxing. That's how I look at it. But uh, it's like, for example, you've got people saying they should get rid of trainer. And you've got people saying, uh, you've got other people, other, Dave Colwell, he rings fighters up. I'm just letting you know, I thought, I thought you fought great tonight, Dillian. Yeah, I've got a lot of respect for you and good luck moving forward. If you ever need any advice, give me a text. That's how the relationships start. Because when, when that fighter hits choppy waters, he, he'll then confide in that person. That's how sneaky it is. And then on the other hand, you've got, and don't forget, he was doing that with Chisora as well. I mean, Chisora didn't last long, did he, with him? And then you've got other 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 people in industry, other trainers that are saying, ah, I should leave him and go with so-and-so and blah de blah They're the ones that are the disrespectful. But if you don't knock, doesn't knock whack out tonight, you'll get people in industry saying that uh, Yui should leave his dad, right? But I guarantee you they're sure as eggs are eggs. Nobody, no trainers will be texting you saying if you need any advice or I respect you and all that. And also, no fucking trainers will come out and say leave Peter Fury because they'll be getting a fucking knock at the door. Do you know what I mean? Or they'll be getting pulled. So nobody will do that. So why can they do it to Tunde Ajayi and do it to, 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 to go behind Mark Tibbs's back to texting Dillian White? But yet, if you don't fucking perform, perform uh, obviously tomorrow night in it if you don't perform against Wark, they'll not fucking do it to peter fury will they do you see where i'm coming from yeah <clears throat> yeah totally they will they will shit house on that shit houses mate shit houses you've got to do it for one you've got to go across the fucking board mate do you know what i mean it's like my weapon at week for next week I'm torn between two people. I'm not going to say who, but one of them, can I, I've just said to somebody now, I have to put him in weapon at week. They've gone, fucking hell, fire. What we're going to do, barricade in the house? I says, no, I can't call one out and not other. So you've got to be pretty fearless. I'm not fucking bothered. Anyway, I'm on me. I'm crazy, aren't I? But some of these other people are sneaky fuckers. I saw some of that fucking, that Ben Davidson, friend of everybody, friend of all the top elite fighters. He was fucking coming out, putting his spoking on Tunde Ajayi and all that. Well, he's not learnt his fucking craft yet, has he? Tyson Fury and Billy Joe dropped him, didn't they? But they come out and and, and company manned it, didn't they, in their interviews on and reasons for splitting and all that. But let me tell you this. They wheeled champion boxers when he took when he got in with them. They got rid of Ben Davison, didn't they? And we all know why, don't we? If they were that good, they'd still be with them. I don't want to hear all that about, yeah, we like to try different trainers and that. Bullshit. They got rid of him because he went up to scratch. That's the bottom line. But they're not going to throw him under the bus because he's MTK's man, isn't he, Ben Davidson? And they're MTK fighters, so they're playing the game. They're keeping it in-house. But if if, if he's so such a good trainer, they wouldn't have got rid, would they? But they know the boxing Billy and Tyson, don't they? But all this fucking bullying on social media from trainers and sneakiness behind the fucking scenes. Let's see him. I do it to fucking Peter Fury this weekend. Let me tell you, you won't hear a fucking peep. <coughs> I'm looking. I'm looking forward to the boxing this weekend. It should be good. Yeah, yeah, it's a good. Going to be a good weekend. I'll be sat in the house with four bottles of black sheep. Watching it all, and then sat there. Probably have another four, and then we're probably just going to do the same old thing on Sunday and let rip. But it is what it isn't. So it is what it isn't. So well, that, that, co hey? that covers my my questions. Yeah. So th thanks for uh, thanks for getting us on the platform and. Uh, no Let problem. me share my views. And what job do you do if you don't mind me asking? I work in um, 
financial services in Bristol for a pensions company. Yeah. Good man. You're obviously educated then, aren't you? I got a degree behind me. Yeah. All right then. Good man, mate. Only degree I've got, mate, is an old LP somewhere that were my mum's three degrees. Do you remember them? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks for coming on, Simon. You've been a real tonic and an addition to the Porky Army. You're on the Porky um, Express train now, mate, and we're heading south. I know. Essex. I'm looking forward to the double weapon. Hey, eh? I'm looking forward to the double weapon. The double, yeah, it might be a double weapon next week, but we're going to see. It might be a triple weapon because it's it's neck and neck between three people, but let's see what happens over this weekend before next Friday. Because weapon at week now, no time, is Friday 6 p.m., every Friday 6 p.m. So there's still time for it to evolve from because it should start from Friday, really. So let's see what happens. But they'll all want to talk about this bubble thing, but... There's a few contenders for Weapon at Week, but the helmet votes that have come in this morning are off the charts. So, all right then. Well, listen, thanks for coming on. No, You're a gentleman. Take care, mate. Thank you, mate. See you, mate. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Well, that was Simon from Bristol, a.k.a. A final, financial advisor. If you need a pension, Simon's your man. I don't know what company he works for, but I don't think I'd say it on here anyway, because uh, he, he, might end up, he might end up losing his job. <laughs> but who gives a shit about you when you're 65, 70 year old anyway with all these pensions? Live for today, that's my motto. But I enjoyed that little blast today and uh, I think it's time to go up now and uh, have a shower and just trot into office and uh, we'll get some done. All right, so peace out. Keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. Shout out to my good friend Frank Smith in Berry and Dave. Old Dave, what what was that thing he did? 100, 100 kilo. Oh, 100 kilo, Dave, 26 reps. Some going that, kids, some going that. All right, mate. Peace. Oh, there was something else I wanted to say as well. Adam Smido Smith. He's got a YouTube channel now. I forgot what it's called. I think it's just called Smido. But Adam Smido Smith. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's the voice of hardcore racing. Oh, no, the voice of uh, the voice of hardcore darts. He, he's he's into darts now. He's uh, He's gone part casual with boxing. So give Adam Smith a, a follow on, on his darts YouTube uh, channel. He's gone full, po he's gone into full porky mode with, with darts. So I'm not a darts fan, but I used to be years ago. I always used to remember coming home from football practice when I was about 12 year old, 12 or 13 year old. I used to play for Granby in Edlington. We used to have football practice on a Saturday afternoon and he used to come home and have my tea and we'd watch Dukes of Hazard and then the darts on BBC Two and it were always John Lowe with uh, big darts. They were like torpedoes. I mean, it was something like, uh, something like, something like that. A remote controller, John Lowe dart. As thick as a remote control on your telly. Keith Deller with spring loaded darts. Do you remember them? He won it in 83, didn't he, Keith Deller? And Bristow with, with hand like that, with, like he was drinking a cup of tea, the crafty Cockney. So, yeah, I used to, I used to like darts. But after that, I don't, I don't watch this current lo load of dart play. I think it's all a load of crap. But, uh, but yeah, old uh, back in day in 80s. Football practice, Dukes of Hazard. And then darts, I'll leave you on that. And on that note, on that cringy note, I'm going to disappear. So peace out.